Well, we're gonna head up to Glendive and pick up a tanker, Billings, Montana. For some reason, I started out in uh, <clears throat> Sheridan, Wyoming, but uh, it wouldn't accept that location, so I had to put myself back in Miles City, Montana, my home base, to find a load. I hate to deadhead like this <clears throat> anywhere. Best way to be is loaded. You know, back when I was trucking, I made it a point to do some of the smaller trips. One, I didn't like to go to big cities. In fact, I really disliked big cities. I'm a guy that's always been in wide open country and I just like wide open country. Anyway, but there was another method to my madness also. <clears throat> and that is that the way I saw it if I was going to Chicago or Milwaukee or someplace like that, I knew that I might be sitting there sometimes three, four hours waiting to get unloaded. And I really didn't have no time for that. Where when you run around these smaller communities or, or stay out west where it's not quite so busy, you generally can get right in and get unloaded. And then it's not not that far to go reload so you're loaded all the time and I set out to prove a point and that point was that I could make just as much money or the truck could make just as much money <clears throat> with me staying within like a four or five state area out west then running to the east coast and going back out west well I proved that hands down I was running four or five thousand miles a week. No problem. Don't recall back then, well, with cattle, that's different. Cattle, you've got to wait to get loaded. There's no getting around that. But <clears throat> thinking back, I never really had to wait very long to get loaded anywhere I went to load. And I never had to wait very long to get unloaded. Maybe at Yellowstone feeders in Billings, Montana. You had to wait to get unloaded. It just depended on what time of day you got there. If you got there before noon, yeah, you had to wait because you couldn't start unloading until till noon or better because they were feeding cattle at that particular time. And we used to run flatbeds with sideboards and we would haul corn out to the big feed yards and billings, such as Yellowstone feeders. And then drop down to Cody, Wyoming, and haul wallboard just about anywhere you wanted to go in the country. Or lumber. Not out of Cody, lumber mostly came out of Missoula, places like that. But Cody was all wallboard. I had a funny thing happen to me with a load of wallboard. I loaded a load of wallboard to go to Nebraska. Whoop, sorry. Hang on, you guys. You can pay a little better attention. I was watching my map there to see where I get off at. Anyway, I loaded a load of wallboard, wallboard at Cody, Wyoming to go to Nebraska. Loaded delivered in Nebraska the next day. It wasn't that big of a trip. I think it was seven, maybe eight days later, I was speaking with my dispatcher, hunting for a load. I was unloaded and empty, ready for a load, and she informed me that I had taken the long, wrong load to Nebraska and that I had to go pick it up, reload it, and take it to its destination where it was supposed to go. Basically, I had, you walked into this little room and your, your uh, load number, you got your load number from your dispatcher, and then you just looked in the, in, at the envelopes and found your load. You just went by the load number. And I, I still had that number in the truck. So when I got to Nebraska, reloaded, the load, I, I, I cross-referenced the, 
the paperwork that I had with that number and with the load because it also told told you uh, what your load was what the wallboard was was it so many eight foot sheets you know and they made them in smaller sheets back then anyway it all matched up so to this day I do not know why or how I wound up going to the wrong place with the wrong load of, with a with a load of wallboard whatever I had to go ahead and finish the load it wasn't that far only had to go about a hundred miles but it took a whole day let me pick up a tanker here take it to Billings maybe we don't even have a load yet maybe we'll just stop here and grab us find us something well, let's see what they got. We're gonna take this job. So, there's our tanker. Now, believe it or not, I did do a stint there for a while when I was working in the oil field <clears throat> for power fuels. I did haul propane on numerous occasions. We actually had a 40-foot propane trailer with a 20-foot pup behind that. You do not, trust me, you do not want to uh, get in any tight places when you've got a 40-foot trailer and a 20-foot pup behind it. We hauled it to the refinery in Billings, Montana. Never quite understood what they were doing with the propane, but I feel like I'm getting pretty competent in the ability to drive this truck. I will admit that uh, it is a little different, but it's also quite enjoyable. It reminds me of the old days. Got to try to make us some money. Maybe step it up and move up to a different truck. Although I do like this older Peterbilt. Well, we're going by a fuel station, but we did fuel up last night, so we'll be just fine. That when it comes to hauling propane, when you have propane, if you ha say you have a leak and you smell rotten eggs, well, that's propane. But in reality, propane has no smell. We used to add it to the load when we uh, when we loaded the propane we would add the we called it add stink the rotten egg smell to it every once in a while when you had a little extra time actually it was kind of mandatory that you did it about once a week it's called burn off your truck you, you hooked into a different line basically at the same place that you would have that you would load uh, the propane but it was a different line that went to a flare <clears throat> and you just simply open the valve and that flare would take off and I mean roar burn off all the excess propane that might be left in your trailer and the reason for that is, is to uh, keep the impurities out. You know, after you haul so many loads, you're gonna get some impurities. Winter time, you have condensation, things like that. You wanna get those impurities out of the system so you just burn it off. It's interesting, to say the least. see the, the marker on the front of the hood of this truck. Now, I've driven roads in Montana, way out in the back country, hauling cows or lumber, even lumber. 
that uh, were so narrow back in those days that when you were meeting another truck, you had better have that marker on that white line or as close to it as you could get to it. That would put your, your wheel right on that white line. And if you didn't, you're going to smack mirrors with that truck coming at you. roads were really narrow back in those days. Then we went to eight and a half wide bull wagons and still pulled them down those roads, which made it even hairier. I remember one night on my way through Montana, I was heading to load cows the next morning. <clears throat> My boss was going to meet me there. He was going to stop and have his truck washed. And then meet me there in the morning. Really nice trucks. They were jam-up Freightliner cab overs. I mean, when, when they came down the road, people noticed them. They were very fancy. First day on my side of the road, hadn't I? Anyway, I'm trucking along about 2 o'clock in the morning. Got my spotlights on. Got my spotlights in the ditch because the deer were terrible. And out of nowhere, boom, I hit one dead center. I couldn't believe it. I mean, dead center in the truck. Well, I pulled over real quick, jumped out. Thank God I was empty. Jumped out to uh, see what the damage had been. Well, the bumper was bent back a little bit, but other than that, Nothing too serious until I smelled diesel fuel. And I knew right away it was the crossover from the tanks. From the left driver's side to the passenger side, and we had a crossover line that kept both tanks at the same level. So I had to crawl under there in the diesel fuel that was running out on the highway and uh, shut down that tank. Thank God we got the leak stopped proceeded on our way. I was running with a couple other trucks. Anyway, next morning, boss shows up at the yard where we're going to load cows. Walks up, kind of a grumbled look on his face. Says he can't believe it. He spent $120 having somebody wash and acidize his truck. Somebody had hit a deer in the middle of the highway and left a pool of diesel fuel and he drove through it. Now he had diesel fuel all over his truck. I just grinned and pointed to the bumper. <laughs> what else do you do? What else do you do? I know that's not that much of a story, but it gets better. Because it was just a couple of weeks later. He decided to get his truck washed again and <clears throat> we were heading back to Billings, Montana, back to Yellowstone Peters, in fact, from Denver, Colorado, to get another load of cows, fat cattle. And he had just had his truck washed. Foggy as all get out. And I was out in front. Well, through the fog, I did not see there was a dead deer laying alongside the road station is closed laying us alongside the road but partially out in the road and I did not see it quick enough and sure enough I run it over now at first thought I didn't think I did any damage but then my boss was right behind me and he called me on the CB and he said oh yes you did we need to pull over you're spilling diesel fuel it's spraying all over my truck so that's twice in like two weeks <laughs> that I covered him in diesel fuel. Felt bad about that, but what do you do? Looks like this is where we're going to get off.
let's roll. Let's roll, boys. Hang on. Now, a lot of truck drivers, they'd go in that other lane. This is a dual turning lane. They'd go in that other lane over there to make this turn. But I don't know, never understood that. I can't see what's on my right side. Something could sneak up on my right side while I'm making that turn. And I like to be able to see what's going on. And I still think to this day, this is the safest way to make this turn. And I'd argue that point with any law enforcement officer. I'm not going to change it. You give me a ticket. I am not going to change it. There's certain things about moving up and down the road in a truck. Thankfully, those uh, folks in them cars back there were uh, very polite. Well, anyway, there are certain things about moving things down the road in a truck that you, you have to take full responsibility for it. And sometimes there's a law that says you can't do that or you shouldn't do that or some unwritten rule that you shouldn't do that. Well, I, well, my friend, this is the deal. If it's the safest way to do it, then do it. I've had these conversations with law enforcement officers before and they will never change my mind. I think what I'm trying to say is, is uh, I do believe that in law enforcement, I do believe in them. I think that they're a very necessary part of life. Even in the trucking industry, safety guys that uh, you know, keep trucks safe out on the road. Check them over, make sure they're good to go. Keep drivers safe. I believe in all that. I gotta back up just a touch here. Uh, but some of those laws and rules are just plump silly. Let's see here. We are in Billings and we are at Exxon Mobil. Now we have to figure out where they want this here load of propane. Maybe I'm at the wrong place. Oh, I see flashing lights. Looks like we get to pull straight in. We don't have to back up. We'll just drop this bad boy right alongside this fence right here. Might have to back up a little bit, this looks like. She just ain't gonna track in there. And I just can't get no closer to that fence there. Oh, they're gonna let me do it. I'm gonna just back that up, even though I don't like it. All right, we're gonna drop that trailer, and we're gonna call it a day. Job completed. Excellent. LPG delivered from Glendive to Billings, 198 miles, four hours, 37 minutes. Used 37 gallons of fuel. Uh, made a base reward of $15,275. That is going to wrap it up for Papa Pickle today.